Hi, this is your plumbing pal, and what we're going to look at today is changing washers on a traditional crosshead tap. Okay. In this case, we're going to look at the bath tap. We're also going to look at the wash and basin tap. Okay, as you can see, traditional crosshead taps use one of three washer sizes. What we have here is a three-quarter washer, a half-inch washer, and a three-eight washer. Three-eight washer is very seldom used and it's usually for special design kitchen tabs so we don't need to worry about that at this moment in time, we're going to put it out of the way and what we're going to be replacing today is a half inch washer on a wash hand basin and three quarter washer on a tap now you won't know in advance what kind of washers your taps have got so if you feel the need you can go and buy multi packs of washers which will give you all the sizes and all the types you can go to Screwfix, get a 170 piece set for $12.99 or you can go to Tool Station and get a 140 piece set for £10.52. Not bad prices and it means you don't need expertise that you may not already have before you dismantle your tap and you'll still be able to get the thing up and running and working again. Okay. So what we have here is, we can see the washer's damaged. We've got classic staining where the water has been dripping for a number of years down the bath and we need to get this changed. It will cause permanent damage, it's also wasteful of water. Okay? So, first thing I'm going to do is turn off the water. So, it's a combination boiler here, so we've already been turned off the water. We've told, turned off the cold water inlet going into it, which stops the hot water coming out the other side. And both the taps we're looking at here, interestingly enough, are hot water taps. Okay? Second thing we need to do, after we've turned the water off and opened the taps, let the air in and let the water out so we don't have any flooding. What is very important is we need to put the plug in the items that we're working on. These taps in this case are 40, 50 years old. I don't want to be losing screws and dropping bits of it down the drain and then trying to access it. So, water's off, taps on. The tools we're using today are nothing special. We're going to use a set of what's commonly known as gland pliers or pump pliers. You can get them in a number of places, you can buy them online, Bill's Tool Store, Amazon, Screwfix, Tool Station, you pay anything from £3.50 to £12. The other thing we're going to use today is a shifter. Okay? You don't need to use these tools, you could use traditional plumbing tools or footprints, but they tend to do a lot more damage, so we'll try and avoid doing damage to the tap, because I'd like it to last another 50 years if you So, water's off, tap is turned on, no water's coming out of it, we're quite happy. These caps here, on more modern taps, they just pull up. On this age of tap, it unscrews. If you're having difficulty unscrewing it, these are coming off really easily in my hand. If I was having difficulty unscrewing that, if I wanted to not damage the tap, I could put a piece of cloth around it and then apply my grips to it. You do actually get grips that have got plastic inserts in it, but to be fair, we're not spending money and stuff like that. We won't be here to save money. So, undo the cover and what that gives us access to is a big brass bolt under and that big brass bolt holds the tap down into this chrome body here. So get a shifting spanner, apply it in there and adjust it so that it's a good fit. The reason we're using the spanner here is it's a brass nut. If we use the grips on it, it'll grind away the nut if we don't get a good fit on it. Okay, so use the spanner. The other important thing with this age of tap and this age of equipment, which is says roughly about 50 years old, is we don't want the tap to turn when we use a lot of force to undo it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our gland pliers. Ideally, we'll just put them on there and hold the tap. But the tap's chrome. We don't want to make too big a mess of it. So as I've said, instead of using the plastic pliers, we're going to put a cloth around about it. And what that's going to do is allow me to hold against myself as I go to undo the tap. So I'm going that way and I hold it this way. Very important the tap doesn't move. It's even more important the tap doesn't move when we come to the basin, which I'll explain later. So I've got a good grip of that. I'm holding it tightly. I'll use my shifting spanner the correct way around. And away it goes. It's undone. So the brass bolt is now loose, I can let go of that and that, that came away relatively easily, don't be surprised if you need to get somebody else involved and maybe give your shifting spanner a little 
brisk hit with a hammer shaft. Okay. This however is coming away nicely, so I'm well pleased about that. Undo it. And as we take the tap off, we expose the internal workings of the tap. So what we've got here is we've got a red fiber washer. So nowadays people don't use fiber washers. They can carry bacteria in them. They're not recommended for use and they're not as robust as rubber washers. So we'll be replacing this with a rubber tap washer. So there's a seat here that the washer pushes against. So I'm going to grab the little brass seat like so. And I'm going to take my shifter and reduce the size of it and undo the nut. The tap you're working on might not have a nut. A lot of these washers stay in place with the force of the water coming up. So if you haven't got a nut on it, don't worry about it. You've not lost one or somebody's maybe lost one in the past. You no longer need it. Okay. And what we want to do here is take this washer off and with a bit of luck it'll unscrew up the thread. If that doesn't work, don't worry about it, take it off with a screwdriver, take it off however you like, it's going in the bin, it's not any use for anything. We've got a three quarter rubber washer here, so three quarter rubber washer on, make sure it's not too large because it has to fit in through the tap hole here. Hold your fingers, little brass lock nut back on, and I'll do the opposite of what I did before, I'll hold the brass, brass tap washer back plate and give it a little tighten up with the shifter. It's not really important that this is hugely tight, as I say it doesn't really do anything other than steady the washer in place. That's us. Make sure it's not damaged, make sure there's no muck sitting in the face of the washer and run your fingernail round about the orifice that the washer closes down on to make sure that no grit and dirt has come through and damaged it. Insert the body back into that body. And very careful as it goes lightly, you don't want to cross the threads. Cross the threads if you're going to buy a new tap. So, same as before, shift and spanner onto the brass nut, tighten it up a little bit and I'm going to hold the opposite way this time trying not to destroy things as you go, so I've got a good grip of the tap there hold it against myself and that's me tightening my tap body up the cover back down on the top of it and that is our crosshead bath tap washer changed. All it remains to do is turn the water back on and give the bath a little bit of a clean try and get rid of this scaling. So now let's have a look at the wash hand basin. It's the same principles, everything's the exact same but we'll have a look at it and go through it. This time we're changing a half inch washer, the bath was a three quarter washer. This tap's been dripping really, really badly. And one of the signs that your washer is gone is when you get this. This is a tap washer that's actually, what we call it, has been guillotined. So the motion of the tap going up and down onto the brass in the tap body has actually sliced the washer. So the washer's well past its sell by date. And what we've got left inside here is a tiny little plug of rubber. So put that out of the way, but as a sign we need to do something, there's no doubt about that. This is dripping really, really badly. Uh, Open the tap up, undo the dust cap, which again is coming away very nicely, and we have below here our brass body. Now, where this differs slightly from the bath tap is the material the basin is made of different, and that's crucial for us. On old wash hand basins, the hole that the tap comes through, believe it or not, is square. And the person installed it put a lot of putty, either traditional putty or what was called red lead putty around about it. And stuck the tap in and then jam, tightened the jam nut up. So if this tap moves, what happens is this wash hand basin cracks across there, right down to there. 
And we're then going to have to try and find a highly unusual colour of bath uh, wash basin. Okay, so probably four hundred, five hundred pound for a wash basin, which we don't really want to spend. So vitally important here that we hold against ourselves. If the tap had moved on the bath, we could probably not split the bath. Never seen a bath split. Wash and basin can very easily split, so you need to be careful with this. Doesn't mean you should be afraid of doing it, but you do need to be aware that it's very important to hold against yourself. So I've got a fantastic grip there with my pump pliers. All I need to do is adjust my shift and span up. Hold it against myself, make sure the tap's not moving anywhere. And oh, I like that, that came away nice and easy. Undo the tap, take the body off, and carefully lift it away. And what we see is we've actually got no tap washer left in this at all. The tap washer is almost completely gone and it's just sitting floating on the water in here. I'll see if I can get this out. There we go. So what we have here is the remnants of the tap washer. When it was operational these two bits were drawn together and it's now long since defunct. So half inch tap washer for this. So Here's a half inch tap washer. If the tap washer's got writing on it, try and put the writing pointing up the way so the smooth sides down. It won't affect how it operates greatly, but it will affect it a little bit. And what you'll notice here is no nut. We've no lock nut on it. Now there would have been one on it at some point. Are we interested in it being there? No, it doesn't matter at all. The water pressure will hold the tap washer on. And by the time we tighten the tap up and down a number of times, it will stay in place. This is actually quite a good friction fit against the thread anyway. So we're good to go. So, back in. Again, turning it lightly with your fingers to make sure you don't cross the threads because brass is quite a soft metal, don't forget. Then give it a little bit of a jam up to like this and what we're going to have to do again is hold against ourselves and again in the opposite direction. Let's go easy on it, make sure you're pulling back as much as you're pushing and that's it. Put the cap back on. Turn the tap off. Make sure you've not left anything lying about and you can take the plugs out there. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the water on and make sure they're working okay. Right, so I've turned the water back on. I've turned the cold inlet on into my combi boiler and turn my tap on gently. And you hear the air coming out. A little bit of dirt, just residual dirt that's lying in there. And a nice operational tap, and if we go to the bath tap, same again, and let the duct flow through, switch the tap off, two fully operational taps, need to clear the staining off, and it won't keep us awake at night with the dripper, the sound of dripping water anymore. Okay, thanks for watching the video. As you can see, changing the tap washer is not rocket science. It does require a little bit of care and attention. Okay, we've used some very simple tools. We've used an old t-shirt, aka a duster. We've used a set of pump pliers, a set of pump pliers, an adjustable spanner, and a small screwdriver. And using just those simple tools, we've managed to change the tap washers and make our taps fully operational again. Remember, do not share this video, it's just for your use only. Don't tell anybody. Thank you for watching.